of humans with power, and in the process, avoiding disaster. What? At least... Ah! No! Dude, no! Bro, what? the border, vote Trump. If you want to restore law and order in this country, vote Trump. If you want to defeat the deep state, vote Trump. Hey, Johnny. Hey, Pachi. I'm having a really hard time wrapping my head around this story, I must, I must yeah. admit. And this concept of deep state has been so... I think why dude he is so theatrical big dog is so theatrical man i mean i guess if it works it works you know what i mean like his videos do bang like they get a shit ton of a shit ton of views <clears throat> except i guess his last two videos didn't really do that well but It's like, it's like a vice style type of thing. Dude, I swear to God, it, he is like sober vice. He is basically sober vice. You view count Andy, my man, Johnny? No. Um, I think he's a very successful content creator. I just, I thought that his content was like even more banging, even more popping than, than it actually is. But it's like, uh, he, he behaves like if, if everyone at Vice was like not allowed to drink caffeine, like sodas, caffeinated cold sodas. poisoned by politics and, and and trump sort of using it for everything that he doesn't like and it kind of makes it hard to approach it earnestly but i i think we we have to keep digging like think there's something here is the deep state real is the deep state real this video is good don't worry no, sometimes he does do good videos. Like his last two videos were all right too about like international arms trafficking. It was all right. But it, it's just like every type, everything that he's introducing, he acts like he's arriving at this like unspoken truth when it's like pretty basic fundamental stuff. And he'll have like, he'll leave like a couple, uh, he'll, he'll literally leave in like an outtake where he's like, yeah, this is like really killing me right now. Actually, like finding out about this thing for the first time ever is like really difficult to wrap my brain around. You know what I mean? Like I was watching this Twitch streamer at the top of the hour. He served a three minute ad break and it turns out he has a contract with Amazon and that contract dictates that he serve you a three minute ad break. But at least he tells you that you can avoid those ads by subscribing for five dollars or for free. And then the other guy on the Zoom calls like, yeah really fucked up man i used i had to use one of my friends uh amazon prime accounts to connect it to a twitch account so that i could get one free prime subscription a month you know and use it on him for the duration of this research and he's like wow well i've also heard that like um you know if people are lucky enough they can get gifted a sub by you know 34 mkd 50 or speed razor thank you for the 10 gifted 34 mkd 50 thank you for the 50 gifted Nah, man, that's storytelling to inform the viewer that don't know the basic information in a compelling way. No, I I get it. It's just like such... It, it, it's very corny, I think. Uh, the alt-tab dad, they give it the five gifted. There's this moment in the 60s. Yeah. He does act like he's David Attenborough stumbling upon a rare bird. A rare bird. Where you really like see how this actually works like where power really is to the height of this moment where the us and the soviet union are in this like massive staring contest there's nuclear weapons involved everyone thinks the entire globe could be wiped out in this conflict and cuba is centered right in the middle of it all right off the coast of the us but 
They're on the Soviet side of the conflict. The US at this point wants nothing more than to snatch Cuba, to make it their own, and they've been trying to kill Fidel Castro a million different ways. They're looking for an excuse to invade. And to push back on all of this, the Soviets actually start shipping nuclear weapons to the island. The US has no idea until one day a spy plane is flying over the island and they snap this wild photo. I mean, it doesn't look like a wild photo, it just looks like a, a random field in Cuba. But you zoom in and you see canvas tents, trailers, missile launch equipment. I mean, the US government immediately knows what they're looking at here. The world's most destructive weapons are actually hiding under these tents, ready to launch, sitting right in the United States' backyard, right off their coast. Nuclear war. Uh -huh. oh. There is perhaps something to be said about how hilarious it is that Johnny Harris is doing a, he's doing a video about the deep state, a term that literally was coined in Turkish politics as a consequence of both like the initial inception of it, but then as a consequence of the NATO Gladio operations that took place in Turkey. A uh, uh, deep state didn't devlet is literally the etymology of the word. That's where it comes from. It still exists in Turkey. We call it a parallel government, things of that nature. However, this, this term was originally coined in Turkey. Why is Turkey important? Not because Mexicans are Turks or everyone is Turkish, the world is Turkish, yada, yada, yada. Not a joke. Because the reason why the Cuban Missile Crisis happened, the reason why the Cuban Missile Crisis happened is a direct consequence of Literally the inception of the term didn't devlet, deep state. NATO involvement in Turkey, NATO coming into Turkey, making Turkey a NATO ally, and building missile systems directly pointing at the USSR. Missile silos, missile sites being built in Cuba was a direct response. So, I'm sorry, but like, Come on, I, not, I mean, because I'm Turkish, it's a little bit, uh, I guess it, it, it pricks me in the wrong way a little bit more than it normally should, but it does show like a, a severe lack of understanding on, on even the introduction. Like even in the introduction of the story itself, like at least bring up the fact that like, why did the fucking missiles make it there? See, if he had subscribed at the top of the hour, he would have fucking literally not seen a three minute ad break and he would have actually heard me say these things. And then he could be like, damn, like this is a song guy, which is a callback, by the way. Um, this is a song guy. I found out, talked about deep state. 103 miles away within the past week. Unmistakable evidence has established the fact that a series of offensive missile sites... I thought you used to say that the deep state doesn't exist because it implies the state is in conflict in, with itself, which is not. No, I'm not talking about it with Turkey. Yes, the deep state is oftentimes um, connected to, like, American involvement or a counter to American involvement in a state, in a puppet state or some shit. But we're talking about in the United States of America, then, yeah, you have capitalists, and then you have, I guess, some more capitalist capitalists. I guess that could be the deep state. ...is now in preparation on that imprisoned island. It's a crisis. A Cuban missile crisis. And one man in Washington, D.C. suddenly has a really difficult decision to make. Everyone around him wants him to invade Cuba, but he's not sure. Okay, but here's the kicker of the whole thing. Instead of stay at work that night and like figure out this crisis with his advisors, Kennedy gets in a car and travels across town to like a cocktail party. He came here to a house in Georgetown, the home of Joe Alsop, one of the nation's most influential newspaper columnists. It was the eve of nuclear war and the president of the United States kept his dinner date in Georgetown. And the reason why is because at that party were the people he trusted, the people who really had power in Washington during that time. Most of them lived here 
in this neighborhood, many of them side by side, all within a few blocks. William Colby, the Far East chief of the CIA. He would later become the docs. director of the agency. Chip Damn, docs, docs. Chip Bolin, a former ambassador to the Soviet Union. Alan Dulles, who... Yeah, back when dudes named Chip could be hired, you know what I mean? Back when they made it like that, our prime. Boy, Alan Dulles, where to even start? He's the CIA's longest running director, and he lived right here in Georgetown. Frank Wiesner, one of the founding officers of the CIA. He lived just six blocks away. Felix <clears throat> Frankfurter, a Supreme Court justice. Just a I mean, during the time of Dulles and the OSS CIA, yeah, there was a deep state, but not like that shit any longer. Yeah, I think there's more so like sometimes a little bit of a divergence in attitude within the State Department. There's like parties that want to nuke Iran immediately, and then there's parties that want to destabilize Iran and implement regime change. And of course, no one that doesn't want to touch Iran. So that is the major, uh, like that's the major divergence in, in a policy when it comes to the State Department. Does that make sense? Nowadays, at least. Um, it's not like, uh, it's not that, it's not the way where it's like the American president is like directly at odds with something that the CIA wants to do. We got to do something about it. I don't think it works that way. Um, I mean, there's no divergence within the fucking, there's no, there's no disagreement within the Democratic Party and the Republican Party as it pertains to fucking coups, dude. You had, and I will never forget this, Chris Murphy, that fucking son of a bitch. Okay, Senate Foreign Affairs, or is he Senate Intelligence? One or the other. Chris Murphy coming out and openly writing the words on Twitter. We tried to do a bit of a soft coup in Venezuela and Donald Trump ruined it. That is like, like, how do you, how can you write that? Like we used to be a country. We used to lie about those things. When we used to do those things, we would lie about it only to declassify it fucking 40 years later. You know what I mean? Like now, we're fucking openly tweeting it as it's happening and failing. What the hell happened? Have some fucking shame. Have some decency, Chris Murphy, you son of a bitch. A couple minutes walk away, and Kennedy himself had a house in this neighborhood. Yeah, here it is. One of the many reasons why I shit on Connecticut. Then... It got real embarrassing. On April 2019, we tried to organize a kind of coup, but it became a debacle. Everyone who told us they'd rally to Guaido got cold feet, and the plan failed publicly and spectacularly, making America look foolish and weak. The reason JFK kept his date in Georgetown that night was because this is where power in Washington was. On the other side of town from the Capitol building, the seat of American democracy. The decisions were being made here by unelected men who had an immense amount of secret power. I agree with you, but it's really funny to call reactionaries consistent. Uh, excuse me, they're consistently stupid. Hello? Reactionaries are consistent. They are consistently reactionary. They will never have a position that is progressive. Whereas liberals, routinely espouse progressive values and then immediately drop them shit on them poo poo caca them that's simply what i'm stating you will never find a reactionary that's like i actually love dude i i actually love medicare big dog i'm a fan let's get some more medicare maybe medicare for all actually <laughs> These were powerful men who were yeah, not reactionaries are so consistent. They end up obstructing themselves. Thank you. What a great, what a great example. Like conservatives are so obsessed with obstruction that they literally are obstructing their own policies. Okay. Not elected or accountable. And at this point they had become drunk on the worst kind of power, the secret sort of power that corrupts the kind of power that our founders sought to check and balance with all of their founding documents. But here in Georgetown, it had moved beyond anything the designers of the country could have predicted into a shadowy, separate part of our government, a deep state that was actively blackmailing the Congress. See, they don't want to build a border wall anymore because it's liberals agreeing with them. Exactly. They're like, no. They're like, oh, you want to build a wall? Okay, well, now I want to build a pit. I want to build a pit to put the, put the Venezuelans in, okay? Fuck you. Fuck your wall. We've moved on from the wall.
We are now building a pit. Chris, and working to undermine the president of the United States and being horrifyingly successful at it. Unelected deep state operatives who defy the voters to push their own secret agendas. You take on the intelligence community, they have six ways from Sunday at getting back at you. So even for a practical, supposedly hard-nosed businessman, he's being really dumb to do this. As far as I know, we don't engage in assassinations and kidnappings and things of that kind. I do think there has to be serious questions raised about some of the foreign policy blunders that this country has had over the last 20 to 25 years. Rokana, my goat. <laughs> Just the most... Uh, impossible to decipher a politician in the United States of America. Just, you'll never know. <laughs> he always keeps you guessing, okay? He's so fucking, he's awesome. A true enigma, yes. A mystery wrapped inside of a riddle. You will never understand why Rokana is doing something, anything, as a matter of fact. Sometimes he'll be like, Actually, I think the Maoist Third Worldists have a good idea on, uh, you know, the the unethical, uh, the unethical extraction of natural resources. And the next day, he's like, "We should allow tech companies to be able to execute people <laughs> that are in their workforce. If you code for a tech company, Mark Zuckerberg can kill you after fucking your wife in front of you. Here's the bill. I Rokana signed the bill." And then the next day, he will sign the I am an anti-communist bill. <laughs> There's some truth in the idea that there is an ongoing group of people who continue the work of government as administrations come and go. Is it possible for these entities to go rogue? Absolutely. Was the agency involved in the kind of domestic surveillance that has been portrayed in the news reports? My feeling is that it has not. Okay, I'm doing this. The deep state. Is the deep state real? And if so, what He's is it? This. Before we He's do that, this. I want to take a moment to say thank you to our sponsor. NordVPN is a longtime sponsor of our channel. We couldn't make this work if we didn't have sponsors <laughs> like Nord. NordVPN is a tool that we use to surf. Dude, you can tell when a when a former Mormon is getting swagged out when he starts experimenting with one singular pearl necklace. Okay. He's got the pearl choker on. Is Jover. He's getting spicy with it lately. His last couple of videos, you can tell. You can tell. This is like Johnny After Dark. Okay. This is no longer Johnny Come Lately. This is Johnny After Dark. The internet more securely. A VPN allows you to connect to the internet in more secure ways or to route your connection through a different country, which has all kinds of benefits like being able to watch media that's available in other countries and even get discounts on certain things that are more expensive in the country you live in. But most people use NordVPN as a threat protection tool to block annoying ads, intrusive ads, or um, invasive trackers. The internet has become very sophisticated and there's a lot of like secret stuff happening when you are surfing the web. Nord helps make that more secure, <laughs> For how long blocking have you been the a stuff CIA you don't want agent? and allowing uh, you to Since birth, 32 years ago, I joined the, the CIA. Nord protects you against in a very special program. Attacks, phishing, QR code scams, ransomware. It is an all around protection tool that makes life on the internet much safer in addition to having these other benefits. I use Nord a ton when I travel and I use it when I'm accessing sort of more sensitive websites. I'm a spy kid, Nord also yeah. has other useful tools like NordPass, which is a password manager. You can get this together with NordVPN if you choose the complete plan at checkout. So thank you, NordVPN. There's a link in my description. It's nordvpn.com slash Johnny Harris. When you click the link, it helps support the channel, but it also gets you in on a nice big discount and Bro, come on i'm not skipping the ads man free nordvpn i'm not skipping the ads we're doing ethical reacts start using nordvpn today at a discount thank you nordvpn for sponsoring today's video so we ready nick we're good okay sweet pudgy are you on the board over there hey, here we go. Hey, okay you, if you can hear I really us want this could you start by introducing yourself, who you are, and uh, what you do, and, and what your relationship to this topic of the history of the CIA is? Yeah, so um, my name's Jefferson Morley. I'm a journalist in Washington. I've been a journalist in Washington for the last 40 years. In the old days, spy agencies were a war thing. When the U.S. was at war, it would- He's interviewing his old co-workers. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, act like you don't know who I am. No, stop calling me John Boy. That's like an office thing. They don't know this. <laughs> Set up an international spy operation to best wage that war. And then when the war was over, they would pare down or totally get rid of the spy agency. The thinking here was that a spy agency took That's up a lot a of resources sweater. and... That's a cool ass sweater. Dude, he is swagged out now. He is a swagged out for me, more me. Okay, full blown. Threatened civil liberties. There's a lot of power concentrated into a bunch of unelected people. Worth it during war, not worth it during peace. But then the biggest war of them all came to America's Pacific doorstep and it changed everything. <laughs> So Roosevelt now has a license, more of a license to do what he wants. And one of the first things he does is consult with a man named Bill Donovan. Wild Bill, a corporate Wall Street lawyer who was obsessed with the power of intelligence. Donovan had very strong opinions and he said, you need a wartime intelligence service, you're going to war. Wild Bill Donovan would be in charge of the Office of Strategic Services or OSS. A this is another way that you know that like, we're kind of washed now. Like, we used to have shit like this, like Wild Bill Donovan. The last version of this was in the Iraq War. You got, like, dudes named Spider and shit being generals. Nowadays, we don't have that. This is what they, this is what the conservatives mean when they say the CIA is now woke and gay, okay? Everyone's got, like, uh, imposter syndrome at the CIA. They don't got them mad dogs no more, okay? We have Mad Dog Mattis. I mean, barely. This is what I'm saying. They're on the way out. It's over. We, Spider is a recent general, too. That's what I'm saying. Like, the Iraq War and Afghanistan is, like, the last version of these guys. Now they're gone. Now everyone is CIA is bisexual. Centralized intelligence agency that would be given immense power to do... Bombs away. LeMay was a genocidal freak with a sick-ass nickname. Do whatever it took to keep our people safe and to keep our team on top. This was the birth of modern intelligence, a euphemism for spying and lying and cheating and deceiving and sneaking and breaking, coercing, dividing and conquering. No idea was too crazy for the OSS during this time. Like one OSS psychologist had this idea that Hitler could be demoralized if they just showed him a vast quantity of porn. Paramilitary operations. <laughs> strapping explosives to a bunch of bats and letting them loose over Tokyo. Guys skiing into Nazi occupied Norway. Making fake companies, recruiting off Wall Street from all of his old colleagues, bringing in bankers and movie directors, fake radio stations, anything to demoralize, divide, or confuse the enemy. The OSS is the first intelligence agency that the United States ever has. Oh, and one of Wild Bill's favorite things to do was to have parties at his house. Hi. Are we the first ones here? It's the big night. To plan and plot his operations with his friends in Georgetown, a neighborhood in Washington, D.C. that is strikingly beautiful. Here is Bill Donovan's house. It's now worth $17 million. It's beautiful. And this is where he would have a drink and chat with other Washington power brokers. He would recruit new agents. It's a good thing we were like, okay, that was wartime. Post-World War II, they're like, let's just stop doing all of that. And certainly not do it domestically to our own people and also globally, because uh, we have a global connection now within the OSS specifically. And and that's where the story ends. So uh, yeah, end of end of the video, okay? Nothing to look at further here, okay? This is, this is how it worked. The end. Agents from American High Society, earning the agency the nickname Oh So Social. Pretty clever. Okay, but remember that spy agencies like this were a war thing only. And the war ended in 1945. And the OSS got dissolved. The forces of Germany have surrendered to the United Nations. What do we do with the OSS now that we're at peace? And Truman says, we don't want to risk having an American Gestapo. A political police. His Pussy. meaning, especially in the context of having just defeated the Nazis, was, you know, that's what led our enemy astray. They had a secret intelligence agency, the Gestapo, which wound up enforcing mm. 
political norms and enforcing tyranny. And we don't want to we don't want to risk that. Here's Harry Truman doing the right thing and signing a piece of paper that says that the OSS can no longer exist. Pussy. I mean, Truman was freaked out. He's like, this was really great to help us win the war, but this is way too much power in the hands of unelected officials holding secret information. But it was kind of too late. Putting the genie back in the bottle would prove to be an impossible task. Is it significant that all these guys live four blocks from each other in Georgetown? Yeah, it's very significant because they're the product of this wartime culture. This is one party that just has to turn out right. Here is target number one for the Reds. And who's in the bullseye? You are. So there was a brief moment after World War II when the Cold War didn't exist. We were at peace. But then, almost immediately, tension started to rise between these two great empires that had been allies to defeat the Nazis, but were now skeptical of each other. And senators were suddenly declaring that it was impossible to know where war begins and where it ends. The Soviet Union and its agents have destroyed the independence and democratic character of a whole series of nations in Eastern and Central Europe. And this is when all the intel people that had run the OSS, many of them who lived in Georgetown, by the way, start calling. One of the funniest aspects of like the inception of the Cold War is like virtually every American general and, and politician openly being like, we actually killed the wrong enemies. Uh, the real enemy was much larger. Uh, they're called communists and we have to kill them. We have to kill them dead all the time. We have to kill the communists in the country. Like, literally, just, it's not even like a, like, <laughs> it wasn't like a, like a, oh man, <laughs> oh, these, these communist guys, the USSR, they're real, they're real scary. I think we got to liberate Eastern Europe. Like, that wasn't the fucking perspective at all. Not even a little bit for the resurrection of the OSS, a centralized intelligence agency that we can use to fight this new global war with the Soviet Union. But no, yeah, say especially considering that like our capital owners already were very distasteful towards trade unionists and socialists and communists alike. It's not like there wasn't communism in this country uh, before World War II. As a matter of fact, there was probably more communism in this country before World War II than there is now if you think about it um and and you know the 60s put an the cold war basically put an end to all of that red scare mccarthyism all of that uh genuinely destroyed it but don't forget that we did have a we did have a socialist who ran for president from jail from prison um that's right his name was eugene v debs a bunch of other lawmakers the constitution wasn't designed for us to put so much power in the hands of men who are doing secret things doing this will result in a police state run by power grabbing bureaucrats too much power to military leaders and their insatiable appetite for more money for more men and more power whatever the cost to democracy truman's mind changed and what changed truman's mind was the growing confrontation with the with the Soviet Union. And huh. soon the papers were signed and a new agency was formed. The central You see, he just he just had to do it to him. Intelligence agency, the CIA. When Truman signs the National Security Act, he says we have to be careful that we don't have an American Gestapo. So that thought is still on his mind. The CIA was the big shiny new weapon of the United States in the Cold War. And their mission was to, quote, gain and distribute intelligence and to perform, quote, other functions and duties related to intelligence affecting national security. What does that mean? Everybody knew what that language meant. Yeah. Everybody knew that that was, and we just weren't gonna talk about it because we didn't wanna write it down on paper. Like, what do they do with this vague mandate of national security? Oh boy, they, they go to town. You must stir the ingredients in your chocolate cake. So clean, but so soft and smooth. Operation Paperclip, 1945. Bro, put a fucking Frank Herbert quote in there. Respect for the truth comes close to being the basis for all morality. This is profound thinking if you understand how unstable the truth can be. 
Operation Paperclip, Paperclip, 1945 to 1959. The Americans wanted to get those Nazi rocket scientists on their side so that they could develop their own rocket capacity. James Angleton, for example, protects a general under Hitler. CIA. There ain't no fucking way he's going to talk about Gladio, Operation Gladio. There ain't no way. That, like, so Paperclip is like the known. The thing that Johnny Harris does is he will always cover stuff that like the American government cops to, but will rarely ever cover the other stuff that is, is in my opinion, more nefarious and, and significantly more important because it establishes the basis in an identical fashion, mind you, to what they're doing with paperclip, um, in, in an identical fashion, uh, to, to paperclip where the U establish the basis of the NATO, uh, alliance gets involved in the Italian, Italian election. elections, 1948. Puts his thumb on the Italian democracy and makes sure that U.S. allies win. Operation Ajax, coup in Iran, 1953. The CIA and the MI6 organize a coup to overthrow the democratically elected government. Now that we encourage the Shah to take that action, I will not deny. CIA coup Guatemala, 1954. Bananas, of course, bananas. Again, democratically elected government reformists wanted to engage in land reform, and the CIA overthrows it, really at the behest of the United Fruit. Company. CIA is now helping American corporations. The, the influence of American corporations on the CIA actions is unmistakable. Alan Dulles was on the board of directors. Howard Hunt, mm -hmm. Birch O'Neill, David Phillips, CIA coup in Congo, Congo, early 1960s, CIA coup in Chile, 1973. Wait, hold on. Why is this ex CIA guy saying there was a CIA coup in Chile in 1973? I thought I watched a Johnny Harris video that said that, that, uh, glanced over that hmm interesting Johnny doesn't think that that's a coup am I misremembering speaking of Chile Speaking of Chile and also Salvador Allende, Pedro Pascal's sister follows me on Instagram. I followed her back, please. I would love to have you and your brother on the stream at some point. Please come on the broadcast. Both of you guys. Just saying. Randomly bringing that up. Never forget 9-11. 1973. The assassination operation against General Schneider in 1970 is coordinated with Kissinger's office. Thank you. Nice to see you all. Mind control experiments, MK Ultra. In 1950, the CIA launches a massive program to develop. Oh, <laughs> he was introduced as a reporter, not ex CIA. What are you getting at? <coughs> You're right. <laughs> we were making jokes about how this dude is a CIA uh, earlier. And uh, it just it stuck with me. Means of controlling people's minds. Some 40 U.S. academic institutions were involved in this kind Giving of LSD research. LSD to people without their permission. Can we develop a truth serum? Dosing somebody with LSD 60 times in a week. NSA's Operation, Operation Shamrock, Shamrock, electronic surveillance, 1945 to 1975. The first warrantless wiretap. Oh God, Bay of Pigs, nightmare. There were hundreds of CIA assassination plots. Operation Phoenix. Eventually, Bill Colby, who was later director, admitted that they had killed 20,000 people. Operation Mockingbird, COINTELPRO, Co Operation Chaos, Watergate, Jim Critchfield, Frank Wiesner, James Angleton, Roosevelt, John Foster Dulles, Corey, CIA coup in Indonesia, CIA coup in Greece, in CIA involvement in the Guatemalan Civil War. It was a CIA crime spree for 20 years. There's no other way to describe it. So by the 1970s, the CIA is this powerful, well-funded, machine of intelligence that is doing a lot of secret things all around the world. They start blackmailing lawmakers to scare them away from investigating them and reining them in. These agencies had harmful personal information on lots of people. When I was doing my Angleton book, a guy told me one day when he went to meet Angleton, 
Angleton quoted back to him what he had said to his wife in bed the night before. And so they had this capacity, and people knew that they had this capacity. You know, the Kennedys knew that J. Edgar Hoover had information about his affairs with various women. This kind of knowledge that they had, Angleton and Hoover were masters at using that kind of, those kind of secrets as leverage. Kennedy had this thing hanging over his head. And he Damn, dude. When they talk about it like this, kind of makes me feel like America's the big bad. Hold on. Johnny, it ain't so. Can you, can you tell me why all of this is actually ultimately for, for good to prevail over evil, please? I assume, I assume that we're not the bad guys here, right? I mean, it's just like, uh, just say that like we don't do that anymore or something. And he knew Hoover, you know, had that on him. And so, you know, he couldn't fire Hoover. And so much of this power is concentrated among just a few people, many of them not elected and many of them living right here along these streets in this neighborhood of Georgetown, living in fancy homes, having fancy cocktail parties, and kind of running the Western world. It's exactly the nightmare of the founders of the country and the nightmare of President Truman. And one month after the assassination of President Kennedy, Harry Truman publishes an article in the Washington Post and says the CIA should be abolished. Wow. And he says, it has cast a shadow on the historical reputation of the United States. The man who signed the piece of paper that created the CIA comes out and says he regrets it. Eventually, Americans start to get savvy to the fact that their government is sort of going off the rails. As this war in Vietnam drags on, more and more Americans stand up and say enough, demanding accountability for I'm not going to lie, so far, this is the most, like, maybe Johnny is not CIA video I've ever watched. That's the only take I have on it. He is destroying the CIA allegations right now. Has to keep his cover? No, man, I think something changed. I think Johnny got that dog in him, okay? He started wearing the singular choker. I think I'm telling you, man, maybe his contract ran out. I don't know. Yeah. Or a national John security apparatus that had gotten out of control. And what does the government do in response? They start spying on the protesters. Operation Chaos was the CIA spying on the anti-war movement. Johnson calls in Dick Helms and says, what's going on? There's communists have to be behind this. And so they start infiltrating the anti-war movement and they come back in about a year and they say, well, you know, Moscow and the North Vietnamese, they really like this anti-war movement, but it's not controlled by them. It's not by the way, this is literally a direct parallel to the pro-Palestinian movement in America right now. So make no mistake, whenever people say like, hey, oh my God, like, uh, the pro-Palestinian people are getting their lines directly from Iran, like Jonathan Greenblatt said. Remember, no, no, not at all. No, these are Americans who came to that conclusion on their own because they have a fucking genuine moral compass, something that is devoid of everyone in fucking Washington, D.C., of course. But, you know, it's like unimaginable for them. It's the same principle behind what, whenever motherfuckers in the, uh, on the Internet are like, ha-ha, dude, you must be a grifter for advocating for these things after all. Why would you advocate against things that are beneficial for you personally, dumbass? There's got to be a different financial component associated with this. You know? It's always the same. They're like, oh, no, it must be a Marxist infiltration. It must be a communist plot. No one could arrive at the death and destruction is bad angle on their own. It's not funded by them. It's pretty much an American thing, you know? But that doesn't change anything, and they chaos continues to grow and eventually by 1970 there wait does it imply that america is probably spying on anti-israel protesters bro jonathan greenblatt in leaked audio from the adl openly fucking stated he has advisors in the pro-palestinian groups remember the adl literally ha used to have advisors 
in those very same groups in the 90s and also were openly, uh, or not advisors, sorry, analysts. Uh, those very same groups were absolutely spying on anti-apartheid activists against South Africa. There's 30 officers working on it, hundreds of agents, and, you know, the ostensible purpose of chaos. I do wonder sometimes if there's like a fucking actual like DHS guy watching the stream going fucking assholes going at it again. Like not that I'm like important or anything because you don't have to be important um, for it to be uh, for, for someone to be tracking your behavior or the things that you're saying. Just like, come on, dude, move on, move on, move on. Come on. Boring. Move on. <laughs> <laughs> come on dog is boring come on come on come on <laughs> move on from this yo this is lame come on go gamble us <laughs> to detect a foreign hand i mean chaos was in existence for seven years every time they were asked to report on it they came back and said it's not foreign controlled and it's not foreign funded which was obvious to anybody who was involved in the anti-war movement there were a lot of people inside the cia saying you know, we're spying on our wives and kids, basically. You know, they're going to the demonstrations and we're reading the reports at night. We shouldn't be doing this. Are we trying to exterminate an entire people? What, are, what have we become as a nation? Americans were waking up to the fact that these unelected men were wielding way too much power and spying not only on the entire world, but on Americans themselves. been victimized by excessive secrecy, not only with respect to the failure of the Congress in the past to exercise proper surveillance over intelligence activities, but also excessive secrecy has created this kind of mischief within the executive it's Jover. branch. Johnny Harris Senator found Frank the church committee, dude. Oh my God, it's Jover. This is a real vibe shift, dude. That's why he's wearing the fucking pearls. I'm telling you. I think church helped lead the charge of taking all of these and thrusting them onto the national stage and shining a light on them. There has never been a full public accounting of FBI domestic intelligence operations. The American people are learning for the first time just how bad this was. 800 witnesses, 10,000 documents. Their secrets were shared. CIA, FBI, NSA, assassination plots. Does this pistol uh, fire the dart? Yes, it does, Mr. Chairman. When it fires, it fires silently. Almost silently, yes. Yeah. Spying on Americans. A wholly comprehensive listing of everything those people thought or did on any subject you can imagine they're having a concern with. Targeting people like Martin Luther King Jr. and other civil rights or feminist activists. Bureau agents were told to attack the new left by disinformation and misinformation. Anti-war protesters were spied on, intimidated. COINTELPRO is the name for the effort by the Bureau to destroy people and to destroy organizations, or as they use the words, disrupt and neutralize. To be fair, no need for that no more. You know what I'm saying? Every one of us got that dog in them now. We don't need, we don't need these like uh, deliberate programs. To disrupt and destroy i think uh you have enough of it people do it for free people literally operate like they're little fucking dc wonks on twitter for free it's awesome the bureau went so far as yeah they're taking the cia gerbs you are one of them you're not you are one of them yes i am famously very disruptive of of solidarity why? Because I said you can't have a general strike on Reddit. You know. Or or wait, I'm famously disruptive of solidarity because I said trying to uh, implement a consumer boycott of Hogwarts Legacy is not going to help you get the message across. You know, famously. The Vanguard's coming from Reddit, folks. ...is to mail anonymous letters to Dr. King and his wife. King, there is only one thing left for you to do. You know what it is. You have just 34 days in which to do it. You are done. 
That was taken by Dr. King to mean a suggestion for suicide, was it not? That's our understanding, Senator. The CIA's LSD mind control experiments were also detailed to the public. One of the first things they come across is the MKUltra papers. And so were the FBI and CIA's attempts to infiltrate the free press, planting journalists within our newspapers. That's we would later learn in some investigative reporting that, that this infiltration of the free press was much more widespread than church. To be honest, once again, this also doesn't exist anymore, in my opinion, or doesn't have to exist, rather, where we very directly and very openly behave as though we are on the CIA payroll through what is known as access journalism. Like, I think the closest you can get to Operation Mockingbird nowadays is like a Tucker Carlson type, potentially. Because ultimately, everyone else is already doing the State Department's bottom line. They're already defending the State Department. Most recent Israel piece in the New York Times, everything written in the New York Times about Israel is directly, they might as well have a dude working on the State Department payroll, typing out every fucking letter. Straight up. even discovered. He reported that up to 400 journalists had been paid by the CIA under Operation Mockingbird. And there's there's no doubt that it was a massive effort and, 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 and effective. The church committee made a few things clear. Number one, that indeed a group of unelected government employees used immense power and resources of the United States government to pursue programs that were illegal, unethical, and generally out of line with American values and norms. And they did it in secret, outside of any sort of accountability, partly because the US Congress wanted to give them money and turn a blind eye. I can recall uh, members of Congress who uh, uh, recoiled from responsibility of knowing what was happening. Members of Congress who said, don't tell me, I don't wanna know. Now, I think that is an indictment of the Congress just as severe as any indictment which is labeled against any of the intelligence community. When Dulles wanted to get approval for the CIA budget, all he had to do was take a top line number to the chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, and he would say, this is what we want for this year. And the chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee would say, okay, that's what you've got, and please don't tell us anything about what you're doing with it. And so there was no internal challenge to this world of CIA people. But here's the other thing that is so crucial here, which is that when you listen to these hearings, you see people who thought they were doing the right thing, who thought that they were doing what they needed to to protect the country during oh, come on. a very scary time. Come on, After th come on, come on, dude, come on, yeah. Yeah, dude. Uh, no, for sure. When I was, like, training Nicaraguan death squads, okay, I was I was thinking I was defending American interests. Unless he means, like, American interest is almost identical to a T to a capitalist interest and in the interest of serving capitalism. But that's crazy. Bro funded? Bro folded under no pressure? Yes, dude. How are you going to do 24 minutes of this and then all... Oh, what? 30-year period, all of a sudden you woke up one morning and here was this creature that had been created that no one along the line had ever really contemplated. Each of these steps, and I think initially, were innocent, honest, honest steps. Many of these agents were earnest patriots, but they were operating in a system free of accountability. No, man. A lot of them... Well, first of all, a lot of them were Mormon. Some of them were also deeply fucking racist and Mormon. Uh, like, no, they, these guys were ideologically minded. Very much so. Okay? It's not like th this is a secret either. Like, dive, dig a little bit deeper. Okay? Yeah. Like, so, some of them very openly talked about it. Like, Gordon Liddy is a great example. Just an insane person. Okay? It's just so funny to be like, oh man, like what was happening? No, they were literally fucking straight up fascists, 
straight up anti-communist, which is, you know, usually aligned there perfectly ideologically. And straight up white supremacists too. They loved capitalism. They hated communism. And were openly, literally Nazis sometimes. Like straight up, literally Nazis. Gordon Liddy is a great example of a person who was an out and about literal white supremacist Nazi. And transparency. Even within the deep state, there are people who are doing things for altruistic and good reasons. And then there are people who are doing things for their own selfish or bad reasons. And, you know, exactly how many are in each category is, you know, sort of impossible to, to delineate. I got sucked in when I should have known. Yeah, they, they told MLK to kill himself because they really wanted to stop adultery. It was a higher cause. <laughs> Yeah. They were like, listen, we're going to tell everybody that you're doing adultery. Please kill yourself kindly. Why? Because we believe you are legitimately doing adultery and we hate that. Not the other stuff. Don't worry about the, the civil rights movement. We don't care about that. And we don't like that either. But the, the other thing. Better, and where many other more intelligent, sophisticated people got sucked in. There ain't no way he's going to fucking, there ain't no way he's going to turn this into like a few bad apples in the CIA shit, right? Great scene about I Gordon Liddy from the plumbers. Oh, I love this scene. Tonight because Frenny makes a mean roast. I also, friend of the show slash my friend, Kiernan Shipka was in this uh, show as well. Is, is that Hitler? Yes. I set a timer. I'll hear it See? Intelligence. Gordon, you don't happen to have any jazz, do you? Been a good man. What is he yelling? Die Kunst Greckenrat. Show to him. Do you have a show to him? Oh, this is better. He's talking. By the way, this is like so loud in the show, too. Like, they literally. This scene is like deliberately annoying. Thing about art is propaganda. The ancient Greeks. Of course, he's comparing the Hellenic ideal to the Bolsheviks. Oh God! Oh, it's okay. Just eggs, just eggs, Gordon. Just eggs and some kids. Sorry, I'll be right back. This whole new house, new school, it's been a bit of an adjustment. Gordon told the boys not to take any guff from the locals, so they've gotten their share of duck ducks. That's anyway. Me playing a song when my normie friend comes to smoke. <sighs> I mean, he did not mention NATO either. And in other areas. So after the church committee, all kinds of new oversight regulations come in. There's new committees formed, there's new regulations, and suddenly the intelligence community now finally has some kind of oversight. The deep state was reined in. Oh, now, they yeah. did fight back. Church was undermined and... Oh, yeah. Yeah, no. The bad apples were eliminated and the deep state was totally reined in intimidated by these agencies. CIA people, I mean, they hated Frank Church. Jim Angleton would go around and say Frank Church was a KGB agent. Dick Helms raged against him. Kissinger, they couldn't believe that U.S. intelligence was being opened up. On the other hand, Americans were like, oh my God, this is what was being done in our name. But overall, this is a story of American democracy doing what it's supposed to do, rein in the worst impulses of humans with power and in the process avoiding disaster what? at least ah! no dude no bro what what wait what? Did he just say we reined it in? The
dude that's crazy this is like a like a meme this is the meme which is like all the fucking all the instances that were bad in the past that the cia acknowledges are gone far gone it's just we, that's uh something that we learned from for a few decades one of you oh is never mind i was elected. wrong okay the leader of the single most powerful nation in the world. Okay, Have you okay. formed any guiding principles for exercising this enormous power? When it comes to foreign policy, that'll be my guiding question. Is it in our nation's interests? Peace in the Middle East is in our nation's interests. Having a hemisphere that is uh, free for trade. That's some very, very sketchy details reaching us here at Sky Center. It's kind of crazy because like there's he just skipped a step. We did not rein in the CIA still for the record. There was no point like between 1975 and like 2001 where the CIA was not in operation. It was very much still not reined in. So I don't know why he would. <laughs> and, and for the record, it still could go along with this overall narrative of like, oh, well, we learn from our mistakes. Like you could say Iran Contra and be like that actually was bad because that's something that the government acknowledges you know what i mean the former head of the cia was president from 1988 to 1992 this this guy's dad like his dad he, he, <laughs> you're right <laughs> this guy's dad kind of not exactly reined in i think i, I don't you feel like he is over focused on the cia to be kind of sensational here and there are much more boring forms of deep state inside and around government bodies yes but they all fall under the that's why i always say like state department they all fall under the same banner, defending capital interests. East is in our nation's interests, having a hemisphere that is uh, free for trade. That's some very, very sketchy details reaching us here at Sky Center. A new threat. Elon deleted the stone toss Twitter thread. What the fuck? Oh my god. Oh my God, dude, my man loves free speech. That's why he did this. <laughs> what the fuck? Didn't they do a whole thing about, yeah, Hunter Biden's dick pics and how the American people have a right to see it? It's interesting. All right, let's keep going. And a new call to give power to professional spies and bureaucrats to keep us safe by doing secret things. And by passing the Patriot Act, we will make America safer while safeguarding our civil liberties and privacy. And then, of course, new agencies, all with variations on the same name. 9-11 is kind of like a Pearl Harbor. There's this desire, you know, we've been attacked, anything goes, we have to strike back. This is an existential struggle. And that same ethos of the early Cold War anything goes, that returns big time after 9-11. And the CIA seeks or asserts 
without being checked, all sorts of powers that they hadn't asserted before. They implement the torture program. They massively expand the warrantless wire. No, we always had a torture program. We implemented a direct torture program and gave legal clearance for torture directly in the hands of the American military and American State Department agencies. That's the difference. We never stopped doing the torture. It's just that we would usually train people to do torture for us now we were just doing the torture ourselves, directly. Tapping, the kind of things that we had seen Angleton do in chaos, those exact same techniques are revived and expanded after 9 -11. Constitutionally protected Love torture. You know, at, on a very large scale. Taxpayers funneling money into millions of new top secret jobs. 22 Capitol buildings worth of new office space that spring up all around this area where I live to house all these new secrets. And inside them, waterfalls of new programs, so many weirdly named programs that no one leader could ever hear about, let alone regulate all of them. There's not a whole lot of effective oversight on something that has grown so big and so bushy. And none of which should be known to the public. That is, until someone who's worried that history is repeating itself decides to spill the beans. Our breaking news this evening is the identity of the man who sent the Obama administration into defend and explain mode this week. His name is Edward Snowden. He's an American former CIA employee and computer technician. Today he came out as the leaker of classified NSA documents that spell out a secret... And we all kind of wonder, what if we actually need this now? What if we need all these dark windows and top secret PowerPoint decks where they design how they're going to spy on us? What if our safety relies on what happens inside of all these buildings so we keep funding them? But in doing so, we must at least acknowledge what we're doing here. We are trading Wait, what? a portion of our freedom. Wait, what? Our safety relies on this? Sta safety from what? We are the one who knocks, man. What the fuck? Yeah, our safety. You know what we need? More State Department agencies to defend us from the other homegrown threats that we have cultivated and created en masse. That's what we really need. Freedom. In exchange for a sense of security. And in the process, we're creating and feeding kind of a new branch of our government power. One that operates outside of this elegant triangle that the founders constructed to trip up the corrupting forces that- Yeah, we need like another CIA to defend us from the CIA. That's what we need. Seriously. Run the risk of always possessing men with secret power. Most everybody agrees that there's overclassification. There's way too much information that's that's classified but information is power and the fewer people that have it the more power the people that do have it have and the result is that when the most powerful man in the world arrives to the most powerful yeah bro started the video video by saying we were afraid of an american gestapo and concluded the video by saying we kind of need the american gestapo and 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 like with no shred of irony like the entirety of this video was like, here's why we have the American Gestapo. Here's why it's bad. And then at the end of it, he's like, well, I guess basically he's trying to say, like, is this a valuable trade-off? Okay. That question is ridiculous. For those of you who are going to say, oh, well, you know, he's just asking a question. Like, he's just... Forming, he's allowing people to form their own opinions. And it's like, no, because the premise is faulty. At no point is this helping American democracy at all. Every step of the way, every step of the way, every single thing that he detailed, mentioned, was helping some Americans, not you, not your parents. It was helping corporations, people at the tippy top oftentimes hurting you in the process as well, hurting your fellow countrymen. 
powerful house in the world, promising to rein all of this in, to rein in the excesses, he actually finds that he can't. He's not able to change much of it. Instead, oh, he, he really sits there and to. watches much of the things that he critiqued grow under his watch. The thing that yeah, like the top of the hour average going from one minute to three minutes long. You know what I mean? You watched it happen, and there was nothing you could do about it except subscribe for five dollars or for free with the Twitch Prime. Here's the three minute break now. That he's supposed to control, he finds he doesn't have that much control over. These targeted strikes against Al Qaeda terrorists are indeed ethical and just. Secrets keep us safe, but secrets also degrade this delicate thing that we have called democracy and accountability. That is. Yeah, poor Obama. He just wanted to be a podcaster and a Netflix producer. You know what I mean? This is basically the structure of the Chinese dynasty that based their government on checks and balances of different branches and that basically spied on each other in order to no depot department got much power. And if they had a new department would be created to limit the other or a purge takes place to prune the corrupting system of government. until we save ourselves from their everlasting seductive pull. The United States must not adopt the tactics of the enemy. Means are as important as ends. Crisis makes it tempting to ignore the wise restraints that make men free. I don't understand how you can make a video like this. I don't understand how you can make a video like this and end it with like, oh, whoa. They are trying to fucking protect American interests. Which Americans? Incredible. I wish everyone in the country was required to watch this. Wow, I never expected Johnny to talk about this. I love that the mainstream media position. I mean, I think like... I think the video itself is so fucking hammed up with like all of the wrongs of the state department that like the last four minutes don't really matter for many people. You know what I mean? Interesting how we didn't mention NATO a single time in the video. I mean, yeah. I recently learned that my grandfather fought on almost all Europe World War II fronts for Germany. He fought alongside Franco's fascists as well. He was also taming wildcats in a traveling circus towards the end after the war. In 1950, he joined the CIA, worked as a secret agent in operations Redbird and Cautery. He was captured in Berlin and in 1953 executed in Warsaw. We learned about most of this in recent years when a journalist connected his name to declassified CIA documents. The only info they had at the beginning was his name and a date sentencing card into a cell wall. Today, there's a monument in front of the former prison. Funnily enough, after him, I was the only member of our extended family to have served in the German military, 60 plus years after him. And I happen to be a part of the first German military platoon to officially enter Strasbourg since World War II. It was a meeting between Sarkozy and Angela Merkel we were attending, aka we stood for hours in a huge open area in ice cold winds for them to arrive via helicopter and go inside. I don't understand how I, I genuinely don't understand how he is able to like detail out all of this stuff.